Howdy, folks. You're probably wondering how you can outline your speech. Well, let's first talk about what the function of an outline is. The outline should be the bare bones of what you're discussing in your speech or what you're going to say in your speech. Now, if it has a placeholder on the outline, then you need to make sure that you cover that in your speech. The outline serves multiple purposes. One, it's a good uh, reminder on what you're supposed to cover. It'll help you organize what you're going to say in your speech. And two, it's really important for me to see your outline before you give the speech so that I can make sure that you have all of the parts of the speech that you are being graded on. It's another way for uh, you to be more successful. So let's see what is actually required on this demonstrative speech outline. All right, there we go. So the first thing that you are going to want to do is, I know many of you want to start on the introduction, but don't. For any outline, it's really important that you start at the body of your speech. So the first thing that I want you to look at is, what are the materials needed to teach what you're teaching? So if you're making brownies, don't just say what ingredients you need. You'll also need to discuss the tools that you need, the pots, the pans, the cooking spray, uh, oven mitts, those kinds of things. Be as descriptive as possible. Don't just say you need some eggs. Say that you need two or three eggs or whatever it is. Be very specific. After you discuss what materials you need, you're going to start the process. So you will have your step one. So first thing that you do is you add the eggs into the bowl and then you mix them up or you scramble them. So you will literally do this in front of them. So after you've completed your first step, you'll have a transition statement. It, a transition is a statement that moves the audience from one point to another. So after you've said step one, you may say something like, now that I've shown you how to scramble the eggs or how to mix the batter together, together, let's talk about how uh, to decorate the brownies or whatever your step two is. So then you have your step two and your explanation. Pretty straightforward, right? Now you may copy these steps over and over and over, meaning have as many steps as you would like. Make sure you keep it simple though. Uh, but in between each step, you need to make sure that you have a transition. So say, now that we've done this step, let's go on to the next step. Something that literally just ushers your audience from one point to the next. So after you figure out what the steps for your uh, demonstration are and filled out your transitions, then let's go back to the introduction. So for your attention getter, this literally serves the purpose of getting your audience engaged with your topic. It can be a story, it could be a joke, it can be almost anything, but it needs to tie into your topic. So if you're talking about a secret family recipe, you may refer to uh, the feelings that eating that recipe makes you feel or learning how to cook this from your grandmother or whatever it is. But something that will get your audience interested in learning how to do whatever you are going to be teaching us. Next, you will literally say, today I'm going to demonstrate how to make blah or today I'm going to demonstrate how to do this. And then you're gonna preview what your main points are or your main steps. So you may say something like, first I'm gonna talk about the materials you need, then I'm going to show you the prep process, then how to actually do it, and then I'll end with different ways that you can alter the process. Something like that. Just tell us what the main ideas of things that you're going to cover 
R. So your preview has two things. Remember that. It has your purpose statement. Today I'm going to demonstrate. And it has your preview of your main steps or your main points, including your materials needed. And then you have your conclusion. For all of your speeches, your conclusion will mirror your introduction. So just like we previewed, we let our audience know what we were going to do at the beginning, at the introduction. We're going to do that again. So you may say something like, First, we discussed this, then we covered our materials, we talked about how to pre prep this dish, and then how to cook it, and how to garnish it, whatever it is. And then you need to finally have your closure statement. It references back to your attention getter. So maybe you finished telling the story about grandma teaching you how to make chocolate gravy, or maybe you say, well, now you're able to make uh, chocolate gravy like my grandma did. Something like that. But it's literally just tying a bow and letting your audience know that I'm done and uh, that uh, they can now learn to do it. They can now go do what you taught them to do. It should empower them to do what you taught them to do. Now here's the thing. Most important thing. Do not start your speech with, Hi, my name is Blah, and I am going to be talking about Blah. Do not ever start a speech that way. We all know your name at this point because we've seen your introduction speech. And we will know your topic whenever you cover that in your purpose statement, in your preview. Likewise, I don't want you to end your speech with, that's it, I'm done, or just cutting off. You need to provide closure for your audience. And it's really obnoxious to hear, that's it, I'm done. It, it shows that you're unprepared, that you weren't thinking about what you were going to say before you were saying it. So I think those are the basics for how to outline your demonstrative speech. I will be reviewing your outlines and giving you feedback on areas that need to be more clear or if your attention getter or your clincher isn't, closure statement isn't as strong, I'll help you out with those. But I look forward to seeing your outlines and your speeches. Have a great day.